Hey guys, Bobby Bollinger here, and it is time once more to start up the NFL. I do think I'll be getting some other videos in to just spice things up and add in variety, but for the most part, it's NFL for now. So, to start to kick that off after my season predictions is the weekly predictions. Who's going to win in this week of football come Sunday night? And Monday and Thursday, but mostly Sunday night. First game of the season, Falcons versus Eagles. Welcome back to the NFL. It's the defending Super Bowl champions against the team that came the closest to knocking them out of the playoffs. And I have to give it to the Falcons. The Eagles, they haven't gotten any worse, but the Falcons are just a really, really good team. And I'm actually pretty confident that they can take care of business here. And I have the Falcons winning this 20-14. to 14. Next up, the Bengals against my Colts. Well, Andrew Luck is back, which is nice. And we got Quentin Nelson, which is nice. But if you saw my season's prediction video, you know that I'm kind of high on the Bengals. And yeah, they are going to outclass us in a fairly big way, beating us 35 to 17. Now, next game, Bills versus Ravens. These team, like these two, always seem to go against each other. I don't know why, but the Bills and Ravens always face each other, and it's pretty much always the Ravens who get the better end of the stick here. The Bills this year, they got rid of a lot of their offensive line. They've got Nathan Peterman starting at quarterback, even though he's not the best they have. So I see the Bills defense, well, the Bills offense is going to struggle a lot. And the Bills defense will do what it can, but at the end of the day, I give this to the Ravens 20 to 7. They're not too different on defense still. It's been like four years and they've always been the same defensive quality but the Ravens have some semblance of an offense while the Bills not so much. Now Buccaneers versus Saints if Jameis Winston was here this game would be closer I'd still give it to the Saints but it would be a game as he's not here I have to have the Saints win it by quite a bit at 24 to 13 as Alvin Kamara goes off, as is to be expected from him. Texans versus Patriots. A big, big game for both teams. And, you know, I don't think the Texans will last. I think injuries will besiege them and derail their season. But, in week one... They got a healthy J.J. Watt. They got a healthy Deshaun Watson. They got a healthy Honey Badger. A healthy Whitney Merciless. And I think they have the better roster than the Patriots. Because they nearly beat the Patriots last year. And this time around, the Patriots don't have their two offensive tackles. That's a position that's just dead for them. And the Texans have the tools on defense to punish that. And while Brady is still going to be Brady, he's still going to put up points. I just think the Texans are going to edge him out here and win 30-24. to 24. It's just a more complete team that can very easily punish the Patriots for their holes at tackle. Another big game coming up here, 49ers versus Vikings. 
Jimmy G can't go undefeated forever, and this is the game he loses. Both teams should have a very big defensive day, and the score ends up being 17-14 to in favor of the Vikings. It's just, the Vikings' offensive line can't handle the defensive line of the 49ers, but it's the same thing for the 49ers, and overall, I just don't think the 49ers have as complete a roster as the Vikings. Also, more questions at quarterback, but not by much. Titans versus Dolphins. I... It's weird. Every time I see a Dolphins fan defending their team, it's like, that's your argument? That you didn't want JSI? You didn't want Jarvis Landry? Your defense is better now. What? You lost Nadamakan Sue. It's not better now. I don't get why there's so much hope in the Dolphins organization. I don't see the talent. Tannehill's back, but everyone else is gone. So, the Dolphins, if you can't tell, lose this game to the Titans 21-13 to because, I don't know, I guess the Titans just aren't meant to score a lot of points. Speaking of games people think should be a blowout, Jaguars versus Giants. Pretty much everyone is expecting the Jaguars to win, and I agree. Now, the Giants have a lot of tools on offense. They got, I think it was Sterling Seppard as their number two receiver. They got Odell Beckham, of course. Can't remember the name of their tight end. And they have Saquon Barkley, who ha- I think is going to be pretty good. But all those offensive tools don't mean a thing thing if you don't have an offensive line against the Jaguars. Like, if that offensive line was even decent, the Giants might be able to pull this out, but it's not, and the Jaguars will just obliterate poor, poor last standing Manning. But of course, the Giants do have the offensive weapons, and they do keep this close enough at 24-17, Jaguars victory. Now, upset alert, which is, I think, everyone's upset of the week, actually. Browns against Steelers. Yes, I have the Browns winning, because the Browns just always seem to come so close to beating the Steelers. Like, last year, they had their season opener against the Steelers. And they nearly won that. They were like three points away from tying it up. And that was without Miles Garrett. This time around, they have Miles Garrett. Everyone's healthy. Quarterback's better. They've just flat out improved everywhere, except left tackle. Overall, the Browns are a much better team. I think they're a good team that can have hopes of the playoffs, and I do think they will get this victory over a Steelers team that doesn't have anything going for it on defense. Now, Chiefs versus Chargers. This is going to be an offensive slaughter fest. And I'm going to give it to the Chargers, 34-28. to 28. Like, Neither team... Well, the Chiefs don't have a defense anywhere, so that's why they're losing. The Chargers have the secondary set. It's great. They got pass rushers as well. That's set. That's great. But they've done nothing to help themselves stop the run. And when you have a somewhat new quarterback, they're going to take it more conservatively. They're going to try to run the ball, especially since Kareem Hunt has some sort of star power that would say, hey, give me the ball a lot. 
offensively, that's going to be where the Chiefs can take control of this game. But the Chiefs, yeah, they don't have that running game, but they also don't have that secondary. So that's why I'm giving it to the Chargers, 34-28. to 28. Barring the kicker. Next up, Cowboys versus Panthers, another somewhat defensive game. Both teams are having issues at offensive line. And honestly, with offensive lines being both kind of bad, the Panthers are just better. Cam Newton is more proven than Dak Prescott, though I do think Prescott can do well still. And the Panthers are used to having a crappy O-line as opposed to the Cowboys, who are used to the opposite. And the defense of the Panthers is just very well made for this opportunity. They're great on the defensive line, eh, in the secondary. And with a run-heavy team like the Cowboys suddenly losing their offensive line, this is the perfect moment for the Panthers to strike. And they will, winning out 19-14. to Next game, Redskins versus Cardinals. I don't know why I think the Redskins are a punching bag, but they're a punching bag. And the Cardinals, with a currently healthy Sam Bradford, win this thing 24-17. to There's not much to speak about for either of these teams, really. Next up, Seahawks versus Broncos. There's just such a huge mist hanging over the Seahawks from people that are like, it's done. But I really don't think the fall is going to be as bad as people think. I think they can still be a 7-9 and nine or 8-8 eight and eight team, which I can't exactly say about the Broncos. I can see them getting that, but I can't see them getting that as certainly as I see the Seahawks getting it. So I have the Seahawks winning this 20-14 to 14 as Russell Wilson just escapes the pressure that comes to him. It's what he does, it's what he'll do. Here's a classic, Bears versus Packers. Does Khalil Mack change this up a little bit? Eh, kind of. Much like Russell Wilson, we are talking about Aaron Rodgers. Now, I have the Packers winning this 24-17, to but this could change, because Aaron Rodgers technically hasn't come back from that shoulder injury quite yet. He's a little bit unproven in that department. I still think he's going to come back just fine, but if the Bears are going to win this, it's going to be because he's not quite right. So, yeah, the Bears can win this. We have no clue what their offense looks like, but I think the Bears could take this. But I'm going to play it safe and say the Packers take it, 24-17. to 17. Ooh, almost done here. Jets versus Lions. I have the Lions winning this 17-14. to 14. I don't know why I'm thinking it's going to be that defensive a game, but I guess we just go with it. The Lions are... <sighs> Neither of these teams are really well made. But the Lions have Matthew Stafford, and Matthew Stafford is a little more proven than Sam Darnold, so 17 to 14 Lions. And the final game of the week, Monday Night Football, Rams versus Raiders. Game suddenly got a lot less interesting, but whatever. The Rams yeah, I have them winning this 28-20. to 20. I think the Raiders do have the capabilities to take teams down, but the Rams did not get 
all that star power for nothing. They have to make good on it, and against a team like the Raiders, they will make good on it. Alright, so that's my predictions for the week. You can leave your own in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys later. Get it.